evening, everybody. I'd like to start off by personally thanking both of you for coming to see our presentation, taking the time out of your schedules to see us. We have been working on this project for quite some time. We've worked on the pg and &E study, and we're excited to propose our design. We're next in the future of engineering. My name is Julian Gomez, the project manager. We have Jasmine, Kat, Renato, Alex, Carlos, Anna, and Zeus. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We feel that this is the best alternative for the project as we proposed in the pg and &E study based on social, economic, and environmental impacts. And we feel confident that this design will alleviate the congestion, the traffic congestion in this southwestern region. Now Alex is going to go into the geometric design. So we're going to go over the structural design for the superstructure of the bridges. Each number that you see on the map is, represents the location of the bridge. We're going to have a total of seven bridges, and four of those bridges are going to be spanning over canals. Three of those are going to be at interchanges. The spans will vary between 100 feet and 125 feet, 125 feet being the maximum span that we're using. And we're going to be trying to be as consistent as possible with the type of fit that we're going to use. We're going to use fit 54 inches, Florida I, Florida piece stress I beams, and in some cases we're going to use uh, fit 45, just because the span is a lot smaller. And we're going to be try, we're going to try to be consistent with the beam spacing as well. We're going to keep it at 10 and a half, uh, 10 and a half feet for most of them. Now, this is a typical bridge cross section that we're going to use. Each bridge. Uh, with out to out is going to be two 12 feet travel lanes, an inside shoulder of 12 feet, and an outside shoulder of 10 feet. We're going to be using 32 inch F shaped barriers as per the FDOT standards. And in this case, we're looking at a 54 inch. 54 inch means that's the depth of the beam. So at a 54 inch at 10 and a half spacing, it'll only change when we look at bridge two, which is a 100 foot span. We're going to reduce the spacing, since the span increased a little bit, we're going to reduce the spacing to 9 feet. Thus, it's going to have to be one more uh, beam added. Now, when we talk about the bridge design criteria for the material, we're using FDOT uh, standards series 210 for the Florida pre-stress I-beams. Uh, they have design guidelines, and we, we try to stick as closely to those guidelines, and we're also using uh, the FDOT structures manual, structural design guidelines, and the ASHTO LRFD bridge specifications. And these criteria for the materials are pretty standard. For the bearings, we're going to use elastomeric bearings. Uh, just to mention, these fans are going to be from above to above. And for the dead load, the dead load is going to be comprised of two, two dead loads. We're looking at a dead load of, of the structural components, and we're looking at a dead load of, of weathering surfaces and Utilities. Now, for the dead load of the structural components, we're looking at four things. The weight of the beams, the weight of the slab deck, the weight of the two 32 F-shaped barriers, and that's going to be divided into uh, divided evenly throughout the beams for the purposes of, of this calculation here. And we're going to be taking into account the weight of the stay in place forms. Now, since this typical 115 foot span um, that we're looking at is greater than 100 feet, we're going to neglect the dead load of the weathering surfaces and the utilities. And for this particular uh, bridge, we've, we have a dead load at the interior beams of 2.435 kips per linear foot and the weight of the external beams, 2.189 kips per linear foot. Now we're looking at live load. Live load for LRFDs, it's, it's kind of complicated, but since we're doing simple span bridges, it, it's reduced a little bit. Now, the, the live load is known as HL93, and it's going to be a combination of the design truck, HS20, plus a design lane load, which is a 640-pound per linear foot uniform load, or the design tandem plus a design lane load. And we're going to look at those two considerations, but we're going to choose the one that is greater. And actually, for pre-stressed simple span bridges, when the length is greater than 40 feet, the, the one that will control is the design truck plus the design lane load. And this is just a brief example of how we're going to calculate the maximum moment at our simple span bridge. And we need to know exactly where we're going to place our design truck. And so to do that, we 
place, what we have to do to generate the maximum moment is place the second axle of the truck a certain distance from the mid span. But you have to make sure that the resultant force of the depth of the load on the on the truck is on the opposite side of the mid span. Now we're going to use a moment equation here to solve for a formula for the distance from the support to the second uh, axle of the truck, which is what we did over there. But in this case, for the purposes of the example, we're considering 33% dynamic allowance. And these numbers here, 447 and 191, will change if you don't consider the dynamic allowance. And what this number means, again, is 55.8 feet. It's going to be from the support, 55.8 feet, you're going to place the second axle of your truck. Now, once we calculate the moments, this is what we calculated before, the moment due to the live load, maximum moment due to the live load on a 150 foot span bridge. And lastly, these are just another, some other uh, loads that we're going to consider, the fatigue loading, which is controlled by one design truck with uh, the second axle. One thing I forgot to mention, for the previous calculation, this, the, the spacing between the second and the third axle has to be 14 feet. But for the fatigue loading, it's going to be fixed at 30 feet. We're also going to consider the wind pressures on the structures. There's actually two wind loads. Wind pressures on the structures and wind pressures on the, on the live load. The wind pressure on the structures, the basic wind speed that we're going to use is 150 miles per hour. That's standard for Miami-Dade County. And the wind pressure on the vehicles, it's a uniform, uniform distributed load that is transverse to the, to the motion of the vehicles. Now, Kat's going to go through the foundation design. Kat, there's some of the acknowledgments. Thank you, Jess. That concludes our design for the Civil Rights 26 extension. I just want to say that this has been a great learning experience for all of us at NEXT, and we look forward to continuing the design and completing it for the report. And just like every project that we work on, we want to improve it. And that's what we do. We seek to improve. With that being said, I'd like to open up the floor for any questions. Thank you.